Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here at the Rock Island Auction Company looking at some pretty awesome guns that are in their December 2014 premiere auction. And uh, one of the ones that I found in the handgun racks was this Confederate Provenance Lamont revolver. You may be familiar with these, but um, this really isn't quite as interesting as what I really want to talk about today. So let's put this away. What's really cool that I found sitting next to it was this later centerfire version of the Lamont revolver. You got nine rounds of centerfire 44 and a 20 gauge shotgun barrel. And that's pretty awesome. And even more awesome on top of that, sitting next to it was this cartridge firing centerfire Lamont carbine. Now this is fantastically rare. Both of these, frankly, are fantastically rare. But I wanted to take the chance to take a look at these two with you guys on video because you almost never see these. So let's bring the camera back here and take a closer look. All right, so the Lamont, the regular muzzle-loading Lamont revolver is, is not a particularly unknown firearm here in the U.S., especially because uh, the Italian folks are making reproductions of these, which are pretty cool. Um, a couple thousand of these were imported by the Confederacy during the Civil War and actually used by Confederate officers primarily. They have a nine round cylinder of 44 caliber cartridge, or 44 caliber ball, and then below that, a 20 gauge shotgun barrel, all muzzle loading. We have a cartridge rammer here on the side. This one's, I believe it's missing a fitting to, to lock it in place. It's a little loose, but they're single action only. So we have it, it's sitting at the, see it's fired now. We have a half cock notch, we have a full cock notch. And then the hammer, as you can see back here, we have the regular, the, the position for the caps for the cylinder. And then there's one extra nipple back here for the shotgun barrel. In order to fire that, you take this lever on the hammer, push it up, and it brings the hammer down into a position where when you fire it, it hits that shotgun barrel. So these were designed by a Frenchman named uh, Jean-Francois Alexandre Lemotte, who was born in 1824 in Paris. And then in 1840, he actually emigrated to the U.S., moved to New Orleans, um, started working on guns. He patented this revolver in 1856. Um, in fact, specifically what he patented was using the center axis of the cylinder as a shotgun barrel. And by the way, that's why it's such a high capacity with a nine round cylinder. It's because this center axis has to be this large to, be a, to contain a shotgun barrel, which means the cylinder has to be fairly large in diameter. And the maximum, you take the existing size of the cylinder, what you need in order to make the shotgun part work, and that gives you nine rounds of 44 capacity. So that's what set the, the regular cylinder capacity. At any rate, uh, these went into production in France, in Paris, in 1859 or 1860. Um, quite a few were made. This is serial number 2400 and change. And they were not hugely popular, but reasonably popular. Now, like I said, the gun I really want to take a look at today is actually the later version of this. Um, I should say there was an intermediate, there was a pinfire version, which I don't have an example of to look at today but frankly, pinfires were a pretty short-lived idea. The final version of the Lamont was this, which is a cartridge firing gun. It is substantially uglier than the, the original muzzle loader, but it's also, frankly, quite a bit more capable technically. It still re it retains the same sort of features. It's nine rounds of 44 caliber, or actually what this was is 11 millimeter. Uh, these were chambered in 11 millimeter, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher the name. I want to say Chamelo Delvin, um, the same as the French 1873 Ordnance revolver. And then it, it retains a 20 gauge uh, shotgun barrel. However, all of these were now cartridge uh, cylinders or chambers instead of being muzzle loading. So on this one, in order to load it, we have a half cock. Let's see, I was at the half cock notch. We have a full cock notch on the hammer. This is required to load the shotgun barrel. We then have this flip-up gate, spring-loaded. That allows us to drop a shotgun shell right in here. 
it used a fairly short shotgun shell, one that would actually fit in that space between the hammer and the, the rear of the cylinder there. You can see we have a little half moon shaped extractor that would pull the empty cartridge out when you opened the gate. Interestingly, it also has a spring-loaded firing pin here for firing the shotgun shell. So once you put a shell in, you then close the loading gate and you're ready to fire there. As with the muzzle loading version, the hammer has two positions. We pull this, this little lever down and it exposes this flat surface. When I drop the hammer now, that flat surface right there hits the firing pin for the shotgun chamber. And you can see up here, the main firing pin is not deep enough to detonate a 44 caliber cartridge. Now, in order to load the cylinder, the main cylinder, we are at, let's see, let me redo this. I'm gonna pop the, the hammer back into center fire mode, or into cylinder mode. We'll drop it, and then I'm gonna click it back one notch to half cock, right there. That allows the cylinder to spin freely. Then there's a loading gate down here at the bottom. We open that up, and now we can get in there load each cartridge. If I need to unload empties, I have a non-spring-loaded ejector rod right here. Line it up with each chamber, run the rod through, it pushes out the empty cartridge. So you do that nine times, then tilt the revolver down, load it up, close the loading gate, cock the revolver, and you're once again ready to fire. The original Lamotte had the rear sight actually mounted on the hammer, which was not that uncommon for muzzle-loading pistols. This cartridge version has the rear sight here on the frame, the front sight out on the barrel. Actually a little bit bigger sights than the original gun, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Totally different grip frame. These are frankly very heavy. They're not all that well balanced. These guns clearly never caught on. Uh, this particular example is serial number 19. Uh, the highest one I've seen pictures of is serial number 146, and I suspect there were not more than 200 or so ever actually made. Um, it just did not catch on commercially. I expect it was way too expensive, and by the time this came on the market, uh, there were a lot of other options out there that were getting pretty good for cartridge revolvers. Now, what is even rarer than, than this cartridge Lamont handgun, of course, is the cartridge Lamotte carbine, or full-length rifle, actually. All right, so we've got the exact same loading gate down here at the bottom, same ejector rod, cock the hammer back. We have the same loading gate for the shotgun shell, same extractor. This is the exact same action as the pistol. Where it does differ slightly is here in the trigger guard. You can see the regular Lamotte handgun has a normal trigger guard. The Lamotte revolving rifle has this flat spur coming down the front. The idea there is that you would pull your support hand back against this as a way to prevent the cylinder gap from burning your hand, which is the endemic problem of revolving rifles that no one has ever really solved all that well. And this was Lamotte's solution. Was simply to encourage you not to have your hand out in front of the cylinder gap. The rear sight on this guy is marked on the front 100, or presumably 100 meters, right there. Oop. Yeah. So the front, the, the re so the rear sight on the Lamotte carbine is marked 100, presumably 100 meters. It has here on the, the top, the flip-up portion of the sight, has additional markings for two and 400, but it does have three notches there. I suspect the middle one is a 300-yard notch, and there just is no convenient place to write 300. So that flips up like so. Gives you not a terrible sight picture, especially for something of this era. And it is marked on the top, Colonel Lamotte Patent. 
right here on top of the barrel flat. Right there. So the regular muzzle loading Lamotte was just barely a commercial success, and it was the best of the bunch as far as sales go. The cartridge firing gun was a commercial failure, and the carbine version was manufactured in such low quantities as to barely qualify as having been mass produced. Uh, very cool to have all three of these actually in the same place at the same time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I know I thought this was an extraordinary chance to take a look at all three of these different versions of the Lamotte. Um, being in that this is an auction house, all three of these guns are for sale. Um, in fact, Rock Island does have a second uh, muzzle-loading Lamotte pistol for sale in this auction as well. I'll leave that one to you to find in their catalog. But I have links to all three of these auction lots in the text description below. So you can click there, check them out, take a look at Rock Island's pictures and description. And uh, if you would like to add any one of these to your own personal collection, because they are truly cool guns, uh, you can go ahead and place a bid online anytime. I will say personally, I think the uh, revolving carbines always struck me as a bit awkward. They're interesting, but I'm not sure I really, if I had my choice, the one I would want, I think, is this guy, the cartridge revolver. It's pretty cool. What's interesting is these often have less, uh, less collector interest than the muzzle-loading guns. The muzzle loaders, of course, have that U.S. Civil War Confederate connection and, and often direct provenance. Um, these cartridge guns were far rarer and never used by anybody really uh, interesting or flamboyant or historically relevant. So these often go cheaper, and I think these are cooler. But it's up to you. They're all available. Thanks for watching.